Hi everyone, it's Jerry I'm on chess.com right now, and I just got paired up with the best triple eight. This is a little bit of a slower time control. Five two. So let's see what we could do with this. Let's go with hmm, yeah, let's go with c4. I was gonna go d4, but I played the queen's gambit uh maybe too much. <laughs> okay. Throw in a quick check and scoop that pawn up. Let's go for that. So with that, um, they've given me a 2-to-1 majority in the center. So I'll look to try and put that to use. Now, I don't have to take that pawn just yet. Um, if I do, the knight is no longer pinned. Delaying its capture might be an idea because black may want to play e5. So if I hold this pin for a moment... Uh, the one pawn black has can't be played in the center just yet. Um, however, <laughs> I think I still want to snip this pawn because eventually, there, I mean, there's still useful moves, knight f6, and eventually moves like a6 and b5 can force my hand anyhow. So knight b6 is a bit early, I think at least. Um, black isn't going to be getting this pawn to e5 or... Isn't really shooting for that. Hmm. I wonder about uh, Fianchettoing or Knight C3, D4 come to mind. Um, I'm going to play it in a bit more of a restrained fashion. I'm going to go with... Listen, actually, I'll start with this. Remain flexible. I was going to play G3, but I'll still leave my options open. Maybe I'll go with the D4, Bishop out, E3. Or g3, bishop g2, and uh, kind of like a reverse dragon structure on the white side. d3, g3, bishop g2, a5. That weakens b5. Okay. Um, huh. Well, I think I want to shift gears and not go in for the fianchetto. I think I still could, but... I play it, um, however, on d4, bishop g4 is a little bit annoying. Yeah, let's let's go with this. I was thinking on d4, um, one of the strikes black would go for is c5, but that's that would really be a tremendous weakness of the b5 square. So let's follow through. Swing the back completely around, g3, bishop g2. And I think these... Okay, so... I think these next few moves are going to be non-confrontational. However, knight b4, you know, to start uh, reacting and finding a good square for my queen. <sighs> this is interesting. Okay, I think I could squeeze a little bit more out of my d-pawn now. I mean, why not play up two squares? Black isn't stopping me from doing that. There's no fear of bishop takes knight and queen takes on d anymore, so... Might as well put this center to use. I have a 2-to-1 majority in the center. Let's get on with that. Yeah, I don't... I don't see why not. On knight takes, I'll take with my pawn because I have to watch over e4. Let's pre-move that. Is he going to go to b4? On b4, knight b4, I have now a new square available. I think black is wise to exchange pieces. Some pieces. Um, because I do have a space advantage right now, an ideal pawn center. So, decision time. Knight b4, knight takes knight. I'm pretty sure you have to get the move back, you know. Okay, so let's recapture, building the center. They're striking b5 is a glaring weakness. Can I take advantage of that? I should be able to. I really should. Rook to b1 comes to mind don't want to play this just yet. Let's get some faster moves in. I don't want to play off the increment. I've been doing that too much. <laughs> this can be difficult to defend now. Okay, I have that square covered. They're releasing that tension. My queen now has some new squares. This is, uh... That's a problem. Queen c6. You have to play bishop d7 and I could take this pawn. Huh. What's the big idea there? Don't quite understand that move. Queen c6, bishop d7, queen takes, we exchange, knight takes e4, knight e5. 
and I mean that can't be good, can it? What's going on with this? That seems so weakening. I'm just gonna go for this variation. Even if I'm not winning material, I'll have an active position at least. They're still uncastled, so. Yeah, let's let's follow through with this. So knight takes e4, knight e5. And uh yeah, my rook's okay. Inserting that move first, huh? Hmm. Okay. Not sure where my rook belongs. Let's play I don't know, here? <laughs> I want to stay out of a night move with tempo. Okay, so let's follow through with this. I'm under two minutes. It's got uh, a lot more tactical early on here. Under 20 minutes. Or under 20 moves. I have about two minutes. Knights hit, dark square, or light square bishops hit. If they're not careful, bishop a3 and there's no castling. f5 is just an incredibly weakening move. Knight g6. Could also take the light square bishop. Um, this is one of those positions where there's going to be a lot of good options, I think, for me. And I think I need to pick one quick and just go with it. Be really practical. I'm already thinking about f5, taking the knight, taking the light square bishop, and hunting down this light, this, uh, doubled pawn. It's a simple way to play it. f5, take the bishop, rook check. Uh, that's another one because the king, the bishop can't block because of bishop f4, rook c1, and I think there's too much fuel on that pinned piece on c7. Okay, this knight isn't a pin first and foremost. They have to do something about that. How can it be ignored? Okay. Alright, let's take my own advice. Play quick here. Let's throw a check in. That's a super duper active rook. This knight is still in a pin. I could scoop up that pawn. It's my first thought. No reason to take that knight. He's not bothering me. He's in a pin. Bishop here. Wow. How is black surviving this? Let's stay on the seventh, for one. And I really just want to take that knight now. Hmm. What else is there? I have pressure on F2. Let's take this guy. And hmm, rook to E1. Yeah, let's do that. On rook F8, I'll play bishop here. And on E5, on, on E5, I'll just take the pawn on E4. This must be winning, so. Let's just stay ahead on the clock here. Hmm. Um... Okay, let's remove their most active piece. On bishop f4, rook c2, it's a bit of a pain. This rook is enormous. Rook some, somewhere here, I have a check, and there goes the rook. So I'm up a pawn? No, I'm not. Feels like I'm up a pawn. I have two active rooks. This should be winning. Let's see. That's just a big problem, isn't it? <laughs> I guess they just missed that. Probably resigning here. Uh, that got a bit complicated. We're going to uh, have a look at this one with uh, Stockfish and see where there are some improvements. There, my initial thought, you know, before I even touch this game with Stockfish, my initial thought is that Knight B6 is maybe I don't know. I'm thinking E5 first to cement a pawn in the center. Knight B6. I don't know this opening but it certain moves kind of struck me as slightly odd that was one of them it does gain tempo against the queen but she's kind of quite glad to reside on the c2 square and uh, the other one was a5 and the h6 move it seemed a little bit slow these two i got a big center but uh okay yeah let's quickly review it here i'll bring a uh, stockfish on board and let's see what it has to say okay Let's see where we can both improve. Um, so far, so good. It does suggest e5 here. Computer. 
But uh, knight b6, not bad. It's still fine. It's a knight out. No big shift so far. Uh, let's see. Yeah, my other idea was d4 here. Doesn't have a problem with d4 or e4. Many options, you know, with uh, my opponent not yet establishing a pawn in the center. I have two center pawns, d4, e4, g3. But as mentioned in the game, they're the two approaches I had in mind. d4, bishop out, e3. It's a bit more solid. Um, but uh, going with the fianchetto, that can't be bad too. Or bad either. So g3, any big shifts? What was missed? Has around with this uh, half pawn advantage. Yeah, these turn out to be a bit slow. It's h6 move. Not really sure the intention. Uh, there shouldn't be some fear of a pin against g5. I mean, as it stands right now, there's not even a... I don't know. There's not even some threat of a piece going here. That I don't, I'm not sure what the intention is behind h6. Hmm. Okay, he was calling for rook d1, but this is fine here. e4, I have the center. Yeah, I mean, it's already liking the white position by about a pawn advantage. I didn't really have to, I didn't really do much, you know? Just uh, grabbing the, the c4 pawn and running away and developing naturally. I was kind of just helped by my opponent a little by little. Um, let's see when it got a bit tactical here. I have this center. b6. Ah, it does not like queen c6 is the top move. Okay. Knight e5 immediately, huh? That's what it's calling for. And on bishop to d7. And just to cover that c6 square, scooping up the bishop. Knight takes. What would be wrong with queen takes? Uh, just dropping b6. Okay. Um, anything wrong with queen c6? No, still okay. Bishop there, okay, so, so far so good. This is fine. Bishop back there, yeah, I guess it, taking the pawn immediately isn't good because of the same move in the game, knight e5. This is basically the desired square when you have this configuration. Fienkettled bishop, the knight's in his way, you want to play here anyhow. Knock out two birds with one stone, improve the knight position, allow the bishop to finally see. So, okay, this is still holding a pawn advantage. Did it ever slip? Rook b1, anything wrong with rook b3? And there's a tempo-type move with bishop a4, but if black isn't able to scoop this pawn up successfully, then it's just clearly better for white. Knight takes, knight e5, and yeah, that's just a game loser. f5, and there's no holding this. Rook b7 instead of taking, but this is still fine. Takes, rook check, and there is no bishop c7. I'm pretty sure, right? On this, well, they're saying first take here and then chip away at this pinned piece. They can only at most defend the bishop with two pieces, and now this is collapsing. Taking advantage of the pinned piece, but yeah. The rook on the seventh. Did it not like that capture? Oh, rookie one instead. That's interesting. Um, hmm. Another one being suggested now is bishop to a3. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad what I did, scooping up a pawn, but maybe maybe another frame of mind to be in in such a position is instead of first looking to grab some material, which is exactly what this move is doing, um, look to first mobilize all pieces. I still have a rook and a bishop that are not contributing, so that's why we were seeing uh, blink up there, at least for a moment or two. Rook e1 and bishop to a3 getting these other pieces working. This makes a lot more sense as soon as you see it. Strike at the knight, strike at the e6 pawn indirectly. Or another way to even look at it is to eliminate the one piece that's in your own position, the most, uh, or the best piece for black in this position, but there'll be plenty of options from here. Plenty, plenty of good choices, but gets into, that gets into, uh, playing with a good technique, playing in a way where you don't give your opponent any sort of counterplay, making it as simple as possible. So it's still holding an advantage here. Bishop takes d4. Taking the knight is good. Yeah, there's not really much. 
it's fine with this move. I was a bit fearful of this and rook here, but actually I was still not even realizing that I have this move at that moment. But uh, either way, eliminating this uh, active piece. And then there's just nothing to do. What's best here? Rook c1, king g2, and then rook to f8. These are not happy moves. Rook takes e4, and on rook here, there's a check here. And yeah, this is going to be completely winning. Takes, takes, and then rook to h8, they would get this. I'd probably even look for a different way to do it, but this is, of course, completely winning. The rook gets behind the pass pawn soon, and that'll be gg. But uh, as it played out, rook c4, and I guess they just overlooked that skewer. Anyhow, a uh, pretty short game, uh, even though it was a 5-2, it got a pretty tactical in the middle game there, or right out of the opening. But uh, as usual, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below to this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.